my name is Grace Karim and you're welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm so happy to be here. I know some of you have not seen my face on this channel, especially my new subscribers. So, so today I'm going to be teaching a very simple and straightforward tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how I sew my clothes. The lazy way. Yes, you heard right. The lazy way. I'm a sucker for doing things fast and smart. I don't like driving things on train. Try anything I can do for a very short time. So I learned this little trick on my own, which I'm bringing to you guys because I know it's going to be of help to one or two of my subscribers. I couldn't shoot all the way through. I didn't want to bore you guys with a very long ass video. So I just took some key points and I put it together to make up this tutorial. So you might want to watch every little bit of this video. And to my new subscribers, no, to the ones that come to watch the videos and walk out past, hmm, please, whenever you come and watch, just do a little favor by liking, subscribing, commenting, and just turn your notification bell. I'm happy to serve you. Please, if you think there's anything you want me to improve on, on this channel, leave it to the comment section. If you think there's something, a content you would like to see from this channel as well, please leave it to the comment section. It helps me with my content creation journey. Thank you so much, guys. I'm going to be teaching you the lazy hack of sewing how i make my clothes the lazy way yes you heard right the lazy way so i'm just going to show you how i uh, prepare my fabric before sewing to cut down the time spent for sewing and cutting so i'm just going to show you so yeah what we have here is we have the hankara fabric and i have my underlining for my um dress today i'm going to make in a dress which i will be showing you at the end of this video hopefully so yeah so this is uh, my ankara fabric as you can see it has the direction of the pattern so this is one thing you should know before you cut your ankara off your fabric so you can see the pattern is going from up to down so it just shows me where i'm to place my pattern what we need for this tutorial is our scissors like you know i always want to use a fabric scissors for fabric and a paper scissors for paper i don't try to use them so always make your scissors different from what you've been using i'll be needing my pin as well i'll be needing my pins my pin i'll be needing um different type of pins so that just, just to make my work easy for me so i'll be needing my thumb pins as well to place my fabric on my table so here yeah, that's what i'll be needing i'll be needing a ruler if need be but i don't think i'll be using much of it here i'll be i have two types of ruler here the short and the long ruler and i have a curve ruler here as well so you, you might see me use that during the video but probably you might not so but i just want to show you the tools i have on ground and of course you know i have my measuring measuring tape here as well so this is all i'll be using for today's tutorial so hang on with me as we go on to this journey so one thing i've done is that i've already i've already prepared my paper my pattern to cut so this is another way to cut down your sewing time from your preparation stage it's another way to cut down your sewing time so i've already cut out my pattern this pattern i can use it for as many things i want as i want to do it's for me so i've already customized it to my size i've had all my necessary allowance i've contoured my um, underboss to have a perfect fit i've done my ham but mind you i've not cut my neckline just because i can <laughs> So yes, yeah, so let's go on. The first thing I'll be doing is cutting my lining and my ankara together. Guys, this is a this is a, a very simple hack I learned that I don't have to stress myself to be thinking of when what to do whenever I want to cut. I will cut my ankara, I will cut my paper, I will prepare a pattern, prepare, prepare cut my ankara or my main fabric and go and cut lining. All you need to do just take your clothes together put it together i'm working with two yards of ankara and two yards of lining just fold them together so yeah just look at the points i'll be needing and go ahead and fold them together
next thing you're going to be doing is ma marking out like this is your dark line and i know you'll be wondering how you want it to show your dress so just go ahead now carefully fold along the dark line like this so this is the dark line you are seeing like this carefully fold along the dark line so i'm going to be giving the double loop First of all, try and pin your fabric and your paper. Like I've done, I've pinned everything together. I secured it with a pin at different points. So just go and fold along with that line. Take your steam iron on very good steam and go ahead to press along the bust line. This is going to show you, this is going to give you a very good, shiny, laid out line. Use a good steam iron, don't just use any iron you can lay your hands on. Emphasis on good steam iron. First line has been ironed out carefully. This has saved you the stress of marking at different points where you are sewing. So, you know, it has saved you the stress of marking on your lining and marking on your fabric. And it's going to give you accuracy too. Same line you are getting on your fabric is what you are getting on your lining. So, you can see. Apart from you doing it the lazy way, you are doing it the smart way. And you are doing it the very accurate way as well. So, you can see the light that is showing. Look at it. You can see very sharp and smooth line. You can see go ahead at this point too. For people that are the doubting Thomas hand us that, and also sure that the line the line is showing well, go ahead and press. This is your iron. This is your fabric. Shut down, burn it. <laughs> the lines are showing in pleasant places. <laughs> so you can see the line is showing on your fabric, and the line is showing on your lining as well so how cool is that you're not worrying about anything about going back and forth to mark on your line look at it the line is showing here the line is showing yeah you can see i know you're wondering oh okay but well, you have a contour line on your paper you have a contour line on your paper are you going to get the contour point this and that and that. Worry not. Let me show you what I do. I would thump in the center front to stay in place. Thump in the center front to stay in place. Thump in your center front to stay in one place. Then I'll just go ahead and pin out this one's pin along the line. Pin along the line. Pin along the line quickly. Repeat the process, like just repeat the process on the two sides. pinning you see i already have my you see on the negative side of my fabric i already have my bust line my contour line i'll just go ahead and chalk it out at this point i just take my chalk to trace my contour line i've done chalk it out chalk, trace it like trace it trace it trace it trace it trace it that will help me be able to sew my contour line easily do you understand so you can see the pins are 
going along the content line. I, I might not have done this perfectly because um, I am trying to make sure that I keep this tutorial very short. So just chalk out the line you just you just mark, chalk it out like this with your chalk, chalk it out with your chalk like this. And you can see go ahead and use your curve ruler to make sure that you got you get a very smooth, nice curve at this point, just like this. So just as you have it at the front. This is where your curve ruler can come in. So just do it and when you are chucking it, you do the same thing on the other side of the fabric. So that will help you to, you, you, can, you can repeat this process on each side of the fabric. That will help you to get out your contour line and sew very well. So I, I know you are wondering why my, my, my dart line is so, it's, it's this wide. But this is how it, my cup is going to fit in properly. I have, I'm, I'm quite busty with a very slim underbust. So this is how much I can take to give me a very perfect then seems so I've already pinned out my dart line at the back of my fabric and then have to make it reflect on the other side. You know we're going to be sewing it on fold. So I've already just I actually folded one side of my fabric like this. You can see this is like this is not the center, this is like the side of the fabric, one one, one part of the bust part. And I folded it like this, place my paper behind, just pin along the pin along the um, dart line as you can see here. Then I just Reflecting, I just took out my chalk to make it show properly. I used my curve ruler where I needed to use it. So I'm just going to tap in, I'm just going to take out my pin and quickly sew. So I'm going to be starting from top, from um, the bottom, from the bottom to the top, just because I don't want, I want to tie my darts at this point. I don't want to spark stitch, so I don't look funny. So I'm just going to use my sewing machine. So this is where it started from. At this point, you are free to back stitch. At this point, you go to the base. Just so carefully, we are not back stitch length. Approaching the cuff, so just take your cuff like this and again. So take your sewing machine to one and just sew. So now you can begin to hang your that. No need to back stitch at this point. Don't back stitch back and forth like you would do normally. Now hang your that and drag out. As you can see, just drag out. Here. Drag it out. And yeah, here you go. Cut away from the fabric and knots like twice. Knots again to secure. So this is like serving as a back stitch for you. It's having like a back stitch for you, so you don't have to go and go ahead and be back stitching. Going to come and really neat so you can see I've sewed my dad perfectly. So now let me feed the front of the fabric open. You can see it's already giving us a neat core. You can choose to iron and hair stay inside your clothes before you start sewing this process. But um, this is for me. I don't want to iron and hairstay. I don't want to have a very thick look. I just want to have a very simple look. I'm, my bra is going to give me a support for this dress, so I don't need to iron anything inside. But you can choose to iron and hairstay or paper stay, whatever inside your fabric. You can trim off this dark excess pin your paper and just fold flip one side along along the line with high on flip one side on the fabric pin your pin pin place your paper pattern paper like this pin along this line chuck it out at the negative side that you want to sew then sew so it's very pretty easy and straightforward hack on how to sew your dark lace the easy way. I'm going to apply the same method on my lining and on the back of my dress basically. This is um, another type of sewing. This is the outer sewing. This is not the invisible one where you don't see the seam. This one you're going to be seeing the seam outside. This kind of um, joining is essential sometimes if you don't want to spend too much time taking out seams when they don't fit your clients. It's also an easier amendment. This is what I do for myself more than I don't really do 
I'm using this ring for myself because I just want to do something that will be very sharp and something that can just wear and go. So I'm going to start our machine now and I'll just continue sewing along my seam line I marked out. So yeah, you can see the chalk line already. The chalk line is very visible and it's easier sewing. Next now we're doing, I want to show you how I draw my zip line. At this point, I've drawn both sides. As you can see, this is, um, I've cut my neckline. Um, I've cut my, uh, this is my handhold, this is my neckline, this is the other part of my neckline. So, uh, my body is already coming together. So I've drawn by the sides on both sides, as you can see. I'm just going to go to my ironing table and give the sides a very nice press just i'll open it and give it a very good press just like this so this is my zip i'm going to be using this is like a size 24 zip zipper a size 24 length zipper this is appropriate for gowns yeah size 24.5 i'm going to place your your fabric on fold like this into two like this like this Lay it flat on a board, a table rather, or, or your machine top. So I'm just going to take a bra cup. I need this back. I'm not fixing it, but I want an illusion of my boobs. So um, I'm quite busty. So I just want to give an illusion of my boobs while I'm measuring. So I, I will just lay it flat. I'm still adding a scrap of fabric on that just to give it a very fuller look. You can have more fabric. If you don't have a bra cup, just have scrap of fabric or double your bra cup into two. Place it on the bust part of your front part just to give that rise on your book part so you know your books is not flat so anything that can give you a rise please do it I guess it's enough for me at this point. I can undo the rest. So I'm needing my zip, like I just said, my um, ruler. <laughs> I'm going to call it a scissors. And I'm going to need my curve ruler as well. So you're going to see when I'll be putting all of them into use. At this point, all your measurements are going to be shared into two. Your bust into two, your waist into two, your hip into two. If you're going to be showing a top, a, a, a um, upper torso only, I'm going to measure only your bust and your waist. But this is a gown, this is a dress, like you saw. I'm going to be measuring. I have three measurements. I'm going to be using my bust, my waist, and my hip line, my hip line rather. So let's just go. So take your measurement into two. I'm, I'm working with a bust 40. Um 40. So this is about 20. Mark. Now I'm going to my um waistline. I just know these things. You can measure from year to year to give you your measurement. Just measure from the top across to give you your bust point. Then you put your face, your tape at your bust, your waist. I already know these things with my eyes. I can tell. So this is my waist around 18. Around 18 my waist. So I'm just going to put my tape around there to get my waist. I have a waist. For your hip now, hip is the trickiest part of this whole measurement. So my dress is a little bit free at the base. It's not as clingy at the base as a pencil. It's not like a pencil dress at the base. It's just a little bit free because I'm going to be pleating some stuff on that. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure not so serious. At this point, fold along your hip line. It's a very short dress. I'm going to be pleating. So this is my, this is basically my hip line. I have this chalk you're seeing is my hip line. So this is basically my hip line. This one you'll see is my hip line. I'm just going to go ahead. Fold along your hip line, just like this. Take your dress like this. Fold. You know your hip is curved. Your hip is curved, so you don't want to go and fold. You don't want to measure 
straight like this. You don't want to measure straight like this. Your hip is curved. So just fold along the hip line. Fold. Fold. Like this. My hip is 48. Into 2 will give us 24. But I'm not sure I want it to be that tight. But let's go. So, 24. Just going to go and, and give it 25 because I want it to be free at that point. Not so tight. It should not be clingy. Once it was free at that point, I'm just going to mark it 25. So at this point, I'll, put, I'll connect all lines together. So of course, my allowance initially was one inch allowance. I'm just going to connect the lines together. Are you seeing the placement of my cover lap? I'm not placing it curved or flat. Just going to go straight. So if you want a pencil, if you are making a pencil dress, if it's your hip line, you can just you can you can actually go in like this to give a very snatch look at the back. You can go in by one or by half inch. So but now I want a free dress. I'm just going to ignore this line. This is like not not the place. Chop the place. Your zipper line will be reaching, so mine will be reaching. So it's my this one is zipper line ends, but I'm just going to take it a little bit up because it can't just end where it's ending. Take a little bit up, and yeah, see where the zip ends initially. We'll see where we're going to sew up to. So, what you're going to do, take your machine to number five. That's the root stitch. Go to your machine and sew on a loose stitch. Sew on a loose stitch. When I get to this point where I'm going to stop my zip, I'm going to take my machine back to number two. That is the original stitch length. Just going to stitch here. This is where my zip is going to stop. You don't want it to loose, then I'll continue sewing on a tight stitch. Keeping it straight. Keeping it straight. The zip. So I just have to skip that process. So I not to waste your time, but as you can see, our zipper allowance is well laid and smoothly placed. So you can see we have a line to follow. Um, there's little, little bits of holes on the cloth. I don't know if you can see it very well from the camera. That's that, that your machine needle holes on your cloth. The line, this is easy for us to follow. The line is reflective on both sides of the, of the zipper so our zip is easy to follow i believe you can do this part yourself if you have a machine you use often and you should have this fold as a fashion designer you should have this machine fold this is an invisible zipper fold you can use it to fix your zip a zipper fold basically though you can use it to fix your zip if you see by any sort of zip you are fixing
So guys, as you can see, I've um, cut out my, I've, I've drained, drained, put it by fixing my zips and, and I've drained the shoulder line. So on my dress, just going to make sure I take out some excess stress for my dress. So I've tried the shoulder line, as you can see. Neatly, I've drawn the shoulder line neatly on my dress. So I'm just going to go ahead and fix the flare at this point. But I want to quickly show you before I fix the flare. As you can see, my dress, the base of my dress has a very curve um, shape at the down. So I'm going to just fix my flare along this curve line, just to give it a very girly, frail um, <laughs> Look, I don't even know how to explain it, but I get I guess you get the concept already. So this is how it's going to look like. I've tried I've tried to do my first fitting on the dress. It came out so perfect. Um just as I wanted it. So um if you're if you're still confused on how to cut a basic body dress like this, um with a pattern or on your fabric, I'm going to do a very short tutorial. Maybe that'll be my next tutorial on how to cut a dress, a basic dress like this this is my sleeve like i showed you before i i have gone to weave my the size of my sleeve just not so that the fabric will not frail even though my fabric is not one that would fray easily i'm going to fix the size of my sleeve so the next i'm going to do i'm going to put this sleeve together like this is the front of the fabric uh, this is the salvage the salvage i used to know my front of my fabric place the front facing my machine Take the other front of the fabric, which is this, and place it on top like this. So, I had to explain it front facing back. <laughs> That's the best idea I'm going to, <laughs> best way to explain it. So, after I finish like this, I'm just going to match it on all corners and I'll just flip to the center like this. Either flip it in or you're going to flip it out. So, let's just flip it out to the center. Guys, I've finished fixing uh, ironing out my seam. As you can see, it's well laid out. At this point, I'm not going to take my seam ripper and take out the seam like this, like this. Perfect, though. Very perfect. Perfect. So I'm just going to sew along the line now. Since I've got in all my allowances, I'm just going to fold and sew along the line which I have already. So let's go. So we are making progress on our dress. As you can see, we have finished pleating the dress. Finish pleating the dress. You can see the volume of our pleats are done. Yeah, so our dress is coming together. 
I've done a second fitting. It's really cute. So I just want to quickly show you a hack that I do for um, gathers. I don't know if this is a universal language, but tiny pleats. Knack I do. So most times, if I for short gathers like this, this is a very short lace and I, I want to use at my sleeve to give me a bell sleeve. Just quickly go to take a needle like this, a bigger needle, and take my thread. Just going to double my thread like this. Of course, you know how to um, make a double thread like this. So what I do is that for gathers, quicker for that, I'm just going to start like this, put it like this, and use my needle and thread to sew a basting stitch like this. Just this way. This is a very fast method to gather if you don't want to do the conventional machine gathers. At this point, you can just be pulling out. Just keep working on it like this, working the loop out of the fabric gradually. It's going to give you a same effect. You can do this for layers of fabric that your machine cannot sew. Just this is a very quick app for um, gathers. Just going to keep sewing like this. You can make it tiny, you can make it big, but I'm just doing a basting stitch for my course. You know, I don't have time, <laughs> my time for that. So I'm just going to fix it. Six. This is pretty quick way to gather the fabric because it's coming out like a gather, basically. So I just what I did for this my sleeve and gave me it gave me this um, this is a trumpet sleeve or bell sleeve. I don't know what it's called. And this is what I did for my sleeve. It gave me a really nice. Gather quick and easy, super easy. So you can see, I'm just going to weave the excess here and fix it. So, guys, thank you. The next big pictures you'll be seeing is the finished look of this dress. Thank you for staying with me. I hope I can do this again soon enough. Bye. Bye.